Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another really cool arcade game video for you this evening. Every time we get something a little interesting in, we like to take a video for you. And today, we have something you'll never, ever, ever hardly see. It's pretty rare. Doesn't necessarily mean it's real valuable, but it is pretty rare. This is a Bally Sente Give Me a Break cocktail table. It's a pool game. We're going to play it here in a minute, but I wanted to shoot a little video and show this sucker off. Everybody knows Bally. Uh, Bally was a big deal. Well, you may also know Atari, which was probably a bigger deal. Atari was founded by Nolan Bushnell. Probably just butchered his name, but... And, uh... uh after he basically was no longer at Atari, he started another company called Sente, S-E-N-T-E. -E, that he uh, eventually sold to Bally. And he created some games and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, one of the one of the things that he came up with, or I guess the main thing that he came up with, was the Bally Sente multi system. Okay. So I don't know if he was just designed and uh, involved in designing the, the actual games or if he came up with the concept for the cabinets or what. But on our channel before, we have showed some of these cabinets in the past. So if you will search on our channel, if you click our, like our uh, name where it says uh, uh, Joe's Video Games, if you click that and go to our channel page, you'll notice over on the right side there is a search icon, the magnifying glass. And if you search on our channel for street football was the first one that we had and it was in the Bally what they called the SAC I think it was the SAC 1 cabinet which uh, the Sente SAC 1 cabinet which I think stands for Sente Arcade Cabinet might be Sente, Sente Arcade Computer anyway SAC 1 the SAC 1 cabinet and it was this big huge plastic cabinet with well metal and plastic uh, that they call the refrigerator, and it, had, it was just really cool looking, man. It screamed 1983 or whatever. So we we had one of those uh, here in our shop several years ago, but we filmed a video on it, and we had street football in it. Well, the design of the cabinets was was such that you could change out the games, so you could easily convert the cabinet into another game. You would buy a kit, and it would have a new control panel from about from Sente. A new control panel, a new little cartridge, I'll show you here in a minute, and a new marquee. And you swap those things out, and now your street football is give me a break or whatever. And they had Stalker and, and uh, Snacks and Jackson is a pretty famous one. Uh, our buddy Matt has been looking for one of those for forever. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, some stuff like that. Okay, so later on, they redesigned the cabinet. And they made the Bally Sente SAC 2 cabinet. And we had one of those in too. So if you go search on our channel, uh, it was called Mini Golf. M I N I Mini Golf, which is literally putt putt golf, as we call it. And it was the same exact thing, but it just, uh, the cabinet was designed a little bit different, um, looked a little bit more modern, and, uh, but did the same thing. Well, they had another cabinet that was their cocktail cabinet, and you're looking at it right now. Now, these things, I don't think they sold out that many to begin with, and then, what was that? And then, they only made a couple games that actually worked in the cocktail cabinet. Now, you can, you can put the cartridges in, but you, you need a control panel that'll play the game. So... The only two that I'm aware of that actually were designed for the cocktail was Gimme a Break, this one, and then that mini golf game. There was a cocktail version of the mini golf game. Um, the control panel has a trackball on it and a, and a button, so they, you would, they would need to send you two control panels to kit this into another game. So while it can play the cartridges, and you can slide it right in there, if you don't have the control panel to put on it, yeah, you know. 
Uh, but I've seen on the flyer, Give Me a Break exists, and I know that because I own one. We're looking at it right now. And then uh, there is a mini golf one that is on pictured on the flyer. There's also a, uh, a manual floating around out there showing how to put the mini golf one in the cocktail cabinet. So I know they made it, but I've just never seen one, and I've only seen this one. So but now you got to think about what happened here. This was early 80s, 1985 or so, so mid 80s, and it's a pool game. So it probably didn't burn it up. You know what I mean? It probably didn't make a fortune. But it was kind of designed where they were going to make new kits for it. But then they didn't, right? So any of these that were bought, the operators probably didn't make a ton of money off of this one game. Which means that they probably kitted a lot of them into other games, even if they bought them. So to find one like this that is still the original game... And it's a game that probably didn't earn all that much money. You know, the only way that one would still be around is if some operator stashed it in the back room, never turned it into another game, and then kept it all these years. Or sold it to somebody for their house, and it stayed in somebody's house for all these years. So all that to say, there are very few of these left. I don't know, I don't have any idea on numbers, but you're not going to see a ton of them. But like I said, it doesn't necessarily mean it's real valuable. If you're, if you're a collector of... Uh, Bally Sente stuff, it might be very valuable to you because you might uh, really like it. But anyway, enough of that. Let's talk about it a little bit, or show it a little bit. Um, it's got the wood grain similar to, let me go on this side where it's a little lighter. It's got the wood grain similar to the, the Bally uh, uh, cocktail cabinets that they made for Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man, which I actually have right here. So this is a Bally Pac-Man. It's 19, was made in 1980. Uh, Valley Miss Pac-Man, made in 1981, I believe. Um, and then this came out, you know, since, since I believe this shipped as a Give Me a Break, this would have been made in 1985. So it's a little bigger, slightly different design. It's got the big uh, ca uh, coin door with the big cash box under it. Um, a little bit bigger game, but it's at the same height and everything as the other two. I'm going to show you inside of it how they um, kind of crammed everything in there. It's got a monitor with a with a strange little thing where it has relays on the monitor to to reverse the uh, which direction the the image is showing on the monitor. But I don't think it actually uses it. Like in the game, you'll see whenever we play it here in a minute, it just kind of displays it on both sides. So I don't, I don't think that it ever actually does the monitor reversing thing. But um, we'll play it a little bit and see. But let me show you inside of it and show you how everything's laid out. And then we'll look at the game boards a little bit so you can get a little closer view of those. So this is what it looks like with the door folded down. You got the power brick down there in the bottom. The power supply is mounted over there, and the soundboard is mounted next to it. Notice there are some extra plugs here to plug in different control panels, um, depending on what you have for which game. Over here is the main board, and then you have the monitor over here. So I want to show you something interesting. There is a cord, a, a wire, coming off the main board up here to this little board. Look, the thing had a cracked neck, repaired. To this little board here, okay? That is a board for the yoke to swap the orientation of the screen. So the, the game board has the ability to send that little board a signal that makes those two relays pull in, which swaps the yoke wires around. So why would you do that? It's so that they can make the screen display one way for player one and the other way for player two on certain games. I don't know if they actually use that. It looks like they don't use it on this uh, particular game. It stays the same way, and the text just displays differently on the screen. So... Uh, I don't, I don't think that board is even used, but it is hooked up. The yoke runs through it and runs through those two relays. So kind of interesting. It's a nice clean little cabinet. So this is what the power supply looks like in them. It's in at least the SAC2 
the second one we had that we had mini golf in and it's in the cocktail it was probably the, the same in the original machine too but i don't remember but we had that one was a while back um so it's a big linear power supply that creates several voltages and then up here it has an audio amp like the atari games did so this is a tda 2002 this is a tda 2002 and this is a little voltage regulator um the tda 2002s run off 15 volts which i believe is this voltage regulator if i remember correctly uh, maybe maybe not um, so this is the big beefy power supply that's in it. I love these linear power supplies like this because they're easy to fix. If they break, you can tell what's wrong with them. You just go through and, and test the components and stuff. Okay. So that's the power supply that ran the whole thing. Let me show you the main game board. This is the main game board. Uh, I know people like these old boards that are huge. This thing is huge. I don't have a tape measure here. Let's see. It's about 13 inches wide, 16 inches long. Um, and it, it basically, on the bottom of the cabinet, there is a socket that grabs it where the power supply plugs in. Or actually, you know what? I think it's, there's two little connectors, but um, this is the bottom. The top's up there. It kind of depends on which cabinet it's into. Um, and then you have two sets of dip switches on the main board that you have to change for each uh, kit that you put in. Now, Nintendo did the same thing just a little bit after this, or around the same time, uh, with their Versus system. where you But you had to swap EEPROMs to, to update it to a new game. Well, on these, the, the genius of it was that they had these little cartridges. So this is a complete game. That's all you need. And it would slide on the cocktail, for instance, whenever you open the top, you can slide the cartridge right in the top and it connects like that. And now it's that game. And that's just how it's, that's how it's designed. And they have a little bracket that holds it in place just right and everything. So if you bought a kit, you got that card. You got a marquee and you got a whole control panel. So the control panel had artwork on it, uh, had uh, a trackball if it was a trackball game, had a, a joystick if it was a joystick game. That one, uh, Night Stalker, I think it is, has a steering wheel and a gun on the plane <laughs> where you drive and shoot at the same time. Yeah! Right on, brother! And then they had one called Stomper. I think Stomper. It might have been Stomping. Stomper. Where it had a pad down on the ground that you stomped on to squash bugs and stuff on the screen and the games were just they were all kind of simple games so it, um, but you know we're talking early 80s most of them were so um, you've got a pool game you had trivia games you had a football game a mini golf game which is actually very fun the pool game's fun too um, snacks and jackson's a very simple game but it's, it's a fun game people like um, and so that's the system. Pretty cool. But these cocktails, I don't think they sold that many and they only made it for the, I think they only made it for the pool game and the mini golf game, but I'd love to see a mini golf one. So I've got some cartridges here. I'll show you what's basically the deal with these. I don't know about the security system on it. Um, this was early enough that I believe you can change the game if you've got there's there's several of these carts um, kind of their orientations a little different I'll show you here in a minute we got a couple different types some of them have a couple more sockets and so it's just set up a little different if you get a board that's got enough sockets you can run all of the games that take that many sockets is basically how it works I, I, there may be a few of the boards that won't that you can't just burn ROMs but um, People have been pretty successful at running pretty much all the games. If you got if you got four or five of these cards, you can run pretty much all of the games. And I, I think there's about 15 games, but several of those are uh, trivia games and stuff. So this particular one, and these are all the original ROMs, is mini golf. And see how it says you are mini golf upright, which really screws me up because um, apparently the cocktail ROMs were slightly different. So, 
I can slide this one down in there, but you can only play a one-player game. You can't play two-player. Well, that's mini golf. And then I've got, it's got Give Me a Break in it. And this is Street Football from 1986. Um, I slid this in there and it displayed upside down. So uh, apparently this wasn't made for the, uh, the cocktail either. <laughs> but then this chip here is a... Whatever. Who knows? Some kind of security chip. 139, 245, a pal. So something something's on that. And then whatever that is. So it, it had some kind of security thing running. But I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure you can just burn the ROMs. Now, another thing, if you go to Paradise Arcade Shop, Google that. Paradise Arcade Shop. He has remade the whole kits for several games. So like Snacks and Jackson, you can buy the con you can buy a kit from them. It's three hundred fifty dollars. It's got the control panel, the marquee made out of glass, which so that's nicer than the original. I think I think the original ones were plexi. I mean the the flexi stuff, the thin plexiglass. Uh, I think, and then it has a a reproduction card like just like this, with the ROMs and everything already on it. If you've got the the system slides right in, but it's for the upright, which is what most people have. Okay, I got this one. This is a give me a break again, so there's a, we've got two of those. That might be the upright one though, I don't know. And then we've got another street football. So I've got two street footballs, two gimme a breaks, and a mini golf, but for the upright. So uh, that's that. What a cool machine. So I'm going to go out there uh, and show you the artwork on it a little bit, and then we'll play it. Okay, so let's check out some of the artwork. Now yeah, there's a little wear on the edge here, but it's one of those things. Nobody's got new overlays for it. It says play, straight pull, and eight ball. So we put brand new track balls in it. And boy does it play smooth. It has these little volcano buttons similar to the Atari ones. That blink similar to the Atari ones. And the one player it says is straight pull and the two player it says is eight ball. And then it has a lit or a, I don't know if it's lit, but it has a lightable <laughs> button to position the cue ball. And then on the other side, you get the same exact setup, except it doesn't have the two start buttons. Okay, so on the top, it says Bally Sente Incorporated 1985. Now, it's the Sente. The word Sente and the word Atari are from uh, Nolan's favorite game, which is um, a game called Go, I think, which is an old board board game, like an old Chinese board game. Uh, instructions. Let's see how to play pool. It says instructions. Insert coin, but you don't have to do that because this one's on free play. Press one player start for straight pull. Press two player start for eight ball. At beginning of rack and after pocketing the cue, use the track ball to position the cue and then press the button. Roll the track ball in the direction you want the cue to roll. After the cue starts to roll, use the track ball to apply English. So you can give it a little English after she's up and running. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, pretty sweet don't see these too often. Let me set up the tripod and we'll play it a little bit and see if uh, see if you enjoy it. By the way, these had great music on them. All of the Bally Sente games had great music. All right, folks, we're going to give it a play. Now, I have the camera upside down. The image you're looking at is upside down, but because of the way the cocktail's made, 
it doesn't matter. You're still going to see it the same. You know, you'll see that screen upside down, but you can deal with that, can't you? Right? And whenever we're playing it, you're going to see it just fine. So don't worry about it, people. Don't worry about it. All right, we're going to try it out. Now, I don't know how loud it is. We're about to find out, though. Poifu. It says position cue ball and press button. Let's do a right chip. Now, how do we do this? Boy, the music's great. Mmm, wasn't a very good break, was it? Hmm. Oh. I'm in trouble here, people. Let's try breaking it again. All right, we dropped this. We dropped the stripe. I'm not leaving myself much uh, of a shot here. Dropped another stripe. dropped a solid. That didn't work very good. It's kind of... Hmm. There's no positioning line or anything. Like if I hit the button, scratched again. I gotta read the instructions again. Good lord. Roll track ball in direction you want Q to go. After Q starts to roll, use trackball to apply English. What the hell? I missed. <laughs> I was trying to do my patented paint chipper. Let's try it again. I didn't. There's no way to tell, like, your exact angle. They do have a little... We just need to break it up a little bit. Come on now. See, like that shot, if I had a line, I could make that. But it's going to be hard to make here because I can't... Okay, wait a minute. It's more nuanced. I missed. Let's see. Missed again. <laughs> I'm down to my last shot, people. Mm. Last shot. Bam, there he is. Okay, uh, it seems like it's more nuanced than I thought. Like, uh, you just kind of barely move the ball and it, it shoots. Which means you can be a little more accurate. So, maybe I'll do better this time. What you think? Let's try it again.
You don't get a good break, I know that. <laughs> Once you're jammed up. Mm. See, like in real pool, I could probably make that shot. But I'm not going to be able to make it here. Come on now, come on now. I think that's the first shot I intended to make the whole time. And like, look at all this mess. I can make that shot too. Oh, okay, well, I guess I'm as good as I thought I was. See, you can't get the angles quite right. It's just not. Mm. Oh, I accidentally hit it not quite enough. Okay. That didn't work how I wanted it to. Hmm. Okay. It would really help it if it had like a, a shot line. Last shot, people. <laughs> Look at that. Here's a slow-mo instant replay. Oh, it gave me an extra shot because of that. I didn't hit it enough. It wasn't a win anyway. We'll be all over this high score table by the time we're done. Look at me. I'm even better than I was earlier. Give me a break. Maybe, maybe by the time I get done, we'll have figured all out all the secrets. First thing is you've got to hit the break hard as hell. Not that hard. Still scratched. But I also got three balls. Four balls. Yeah, four balls. Okay. I'm gonna hit it again hard as hell. Okay, that's a little better. Ah, missed it. Come on now. Missed it again. Hell, I guess I can make it. If you're playing one player, I guess you can make whatever ball you want. That's what they're going for. <laughs> I 
We're trying to go there, not there. Mmm. Well, I'm good at scratching. Give me a break. Scratched again. <laughs> sure, why not from there? Oh, come on. Hmm, I didn't. I wonder if there's a dip switch to turn on the shot line or something. Maybe they've got it set on extra hard. That's got to be the only explanation. I can't be this bad. There's no way I'm this bad. We all know better than that. Come on now. Greatest hustlers. See, look. Well, that wasn't a very good break either. Let's see how they do it. Yeah, he's just wasting time. Wasting time. He got a. He got a. Hmm. Yeah, you know he's not really playing eight ball because it's just one player. It just says straight pool. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to make as many shots as I can. How's that? If I can ever get a clean break. <laughs> oh, I meant to make that one. I finally got one I was trying to make. Ah, missed it. Another one I actually tried to make. That's good. Mm. I don't have any good shots. Let's see if it'll let me do the easy one. Nope. <laughs> worked out all right. That worked out all right. That worked out all right. Huh? I actually attempted to do that. That one I was actually trying to go in there, but hey, it worked out all right. Missed it. Missed it. Missed it. I keep making the cue ball, that's good. Well, I am pretty great. It says great score again. Let's try from this end. Maybe it, maybe it breaks better from this side. Not really.
Hey, I made the cue ball. If I make that eight ball, is the game over on straight pull? I don't remember. I finally got a straight shot that I made. Well, I went the eight ball and it didn't kill me, so I guess it really is straight pool. Can I do it? Will I be able to make it? Not like that, I won't. I meant to do that. Yeah. I could I could try to make that shot all day long and I'll just end up chasing it. So I'm just gonna hit the hell out of these and see what happens. Okay. Hmm, missed it. Speaking of missing it. There's no way in hell I'm gonna make that, but we're gonna try it. Ah, missed it. Got it. Okay. Mmm. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Try this trick shot for extra turns. Oh, are you kidding me? No way in hell I can make that trick shot. That didn't work. Here's one way it can be done. Oh, there's my line I need. Come on now. Folks, we're at the next level of music. I was trying to just barely hit it. Okay. I kind of meant to do that, kind of. Okay. Mm. I was trying to get it in there, but it. <laughs> what do you think, folks? What do you think? Last shot. Boy, I love the music, man. These Sente games have awesome music. Okay, I'm actually going to go check to see if I'm missing something here. Surely there's a line you can turn on or something. Okay, folks, there's no way to change it on the dip switches or anything. You just got to get real good at it. Remember, it was made to make quarters. So let's play it one more time. Let's try a straight cue shot, a break shot. Let's just go nuts into the, do a double break, basically. Didn't help much. Well, got another one. 
Okay. So I suppose if I use the... There are little dots around the trackball. If you kind of aim at one of the dots, you're kind of aiming. Um. Hmm. Okay, so that's up. been overthinking this. I didn't get that one, but I'm not that good anyway. Um. Hmm. Okay. straight up maybe it'll throw it in there we go oh I didn't mean the red one but I did mean that one um, okay so if I try to hit the I want to you know I want to hit the rail and the eight ball at the same time kind of did but See, it's shots like that that are hard, because you kind of really need it to be nuanced. And you can't really do it. I, didn't, I wasn't even trying to. I was trying to get it up there. Okay. How the hell am I going to make this? Hmm. Oh. I thought I had till it ended and then it would restart to let me shoot. That's one way it can be done. Boop, boop. Mm. So there you go. I about got that screwed up thing off of the high score list. So it'll look like that. <laughs> so leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Did you play this back in the day? Do you know how to make the, the line pop up? I don't believe there is one. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. you didn't, we didn't have to do that. We did that just for you. It's our gift to you. So you can remember what 1985 was like. This is what 1985 was like. Um... I'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links. If you don't know about that, there is a link down below to Amazon. If you're going to buy something on Amazon, if you click our link first, it gives us a tip. How cool is that? For me, it's very cool. So I appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Also, check out our website. Go to lionsarcade.com. We've been up for years. We've been, I think we've had lionsarcade.com about 15, 20 years now. I guess I could look it up. Something like that. Has it been that long? I believe so. I believe so. 13, 14 years, something. 
But anyway, we've got all of our pictures of our uh, games that we have available for sale right now. You can go check that out. We also have a parts page on there where we put links to a lot of the stuff we use whenever we do our repairs and things. And then we also have t-shirts on there and things like that. So we appreciate everybody that's been supporting all that stuff and rocking our t-shirts. Our buddy Kelly went to the beach with one on the other day. <laughs> we appreciate that. Kelly, if you're watching. And um, make sure to check out our brother channel, My Brother Donnie, who is literally My Brother Donnie. And if you like watching us work on these old arcade games, you'd probably like watching us work on old buildings. We've bought a couple old buildings in a, in a small town near here in the downtown area and we're trying to fix them up they've been sitting for years with nobody in them we're trying to fix them up and rent them to help revitalize downtown so go check that out the my brother donnie channel it's very fun we're having a great time hope you had a great time watching us play tonight i'll tell you what i give this game a a a, a b plus in my book i think it's pretty freaking fun but you know what pool's always fun isn't it so i hope you enjoyed it we'll see you on the next one